New one. So new game, new hopes, direct. That's the role. That's the way. Dunkard. Yeah. Almost drunkard. That would have been a better name, <laughs> I reckon. But okay, I'll take it. Whoa. We went C4. Nothing wrong. Uh, yeah, oops. Yeah, that was a bit of an oopsie daisy, yeah. Yeah. Especially after E6, by the way. Because uh, one of the main reasons why we hold C4 back, or one of the good arguments for it to be held back at the expense of, or rather in favoring knight f3, is because in the Dutch, for example, in the Dutch classical, black has problems with the bishop. And if we start off with c4, then uh, they have got that problem beautifully resolved by trading it off. Yeah, yeah. We, we have gone through these subtleties already a number of times. Now, I don't want to present this as a mistake. That would be silly. But you know why we play knight f3, so it would be good if we followed the uh, the theory of uh, our own. Ooh. And then I, I Dude, missed the theory here, too. You forgot your own game from Reykjavik yeah, like three weeks ago. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, my, my memory is pretty, pretty bad, but I did remember it shortly thereafter. Well, you fixed it, man. You fixed it. You fixed it. All right, now I'm seeing something very sad on the screen already. So did we expect this move? No. What does that tell you? That I need to study the course more. No. Not at all. That it, that I need to punish it. Well, that that's more like it. That that sounds okay. like a, someone I have been teaching for a while. I mean, punishing may be a strong word, but definitely you look to yeah exploit it. But I usually use the word punish. What is our natural move every time, all the time? D5. I like I like the side with which you presented your case, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That makes it the two of us. Uh huh. I mean, there is absolutely no excuse for you not to play d5, sir. Uh. It's gonna be an awful Benoni with a bishop on b7, which is the most horrid place imaginable. So yeah, that is inexcusable. And by the way, just so that I connect some dots for you. Um, when you play a3 here, as per playing the system correctly, there is a system mm -hmm. in the course with bishop a6. Yeah. And then queen c2. And then c5. And the idea of this move order for black is, is that d5 is seemingly impossible now because it's over-attacked. However, because of your study the course, you know that this is very playable. Because after takes, takes, knight takes comes the check, exploiting a few too many hanging pieces. And so here comes our gambit line, when when we take, they play bishop b7. And now this is not defensible in any other way other than e4. And there comes queen e7, attacking both pawns at the same time. This directly and that indirectly due to the pin. Yep. And because if you remember the course like a trooper... You know that our line goes bishop d3, knight d5, castles. Yes. Knight c7, knight c3, compensation for the pawn. Man, I didn't realize that this is uh, a, an ultimate way to promote my chessable course, to, <laughs> to remind you of the lines. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, bishop g5 was a boo-boo. Um, but uh, we leave, we learn. What? Yeah, this was definitely a misspell, and this is a drunkard. Okay, we know that one now. <laughs> okay, take, 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 take. Good, good, good. Queen d2. Have you considered Derek h4 at all? No. Ouch, why not? I think I moved too quickly there. Um... But no, you spent a minute. Which is perfectly uh, sufficient, given the the time control, yeah. to contemplate alternatives to d2, which is very clearly uh, a second best by the looks of things. Wait, no, I did look at this, but I didn't like it, and you're going to tell me why, I sh why I'm making stuff up. So my line was queen h4, bishop e7. What does this get me now? I can't trade into that. No, no, no. You, you, I don't want to hear the story, man. I want to hear the line. Yeah. You started off so well. You, you started saying moves. That's what I want to hear. Okay. 
So what is the logical next move after Queen H4, Bishop E7 for white? Or if you are struggling to name it, then throw at me three candidates and we'll cherry pick. Rook G1. Okay, that's one. Keep going. Uh, the first move I checked, but I don't see a line where it's good, is knight e4. I agree with you. It's it's not intuitive. It's not fitting uh, into the logic of the position. It's moving the same piece when you have got 5,000 pieces that haven't moved yet. That's not a candidate there. And it doesn't do anything. E4. because f Yeah, e4 is a candidate. I'm still dying to hear another one. What's your next move gonna be after Queen D3 if it's your turn again? Is it gonna be E4 again? No, probably not. Maybe Bishop G2. Okay, so I can't force Queenside out, castled out of you, no matter how hard I tried, right? <laughs> okay. So let's have a look at this, and I want you to tell me what you think. And I'm not selling this to you like a, this is brilliant for white. So I don't want me you to justify what I showed you. I want you to tell me what you genuinely think. I don't know if it's good or not. But you would be very, find it very hard to talk me out of this. Yeah, for black here, I'm looking at at knight d5. I did actually look at knight d5 too, but you do realize that whilst I very much love the fact that you are looking at tactical sources, that this is an absolute, the epitome of desperate measures. Right? Like this is like real hardcore trying to kill the game before it could develop. Um, I did look at this and I thought that I would just take this. I'm guessing you wanted to retake with queen, yeah? Yeah. And then I would trade queen. You would take back with the d knight. And then I would go either yeah. knight b5 or... Yeah, knight b5. And uh, okay. plant the knight on d6. d6. E7, d7 is very tender, yada, yada, yada. The point, Derek, is, is that the d5 pressure is immense. The other point is, is that this king is either going to stay mid or castle here. And you are really well poised to challenge both. Rook G1 yeah. is coming real fast in case they castle. E4, F4, E5 is coming. It's a lot of pressure, man, already on on uh, black. And I don't see how black can play a solid game here. Like, what is black's counter plan here? Like, uh, there is nothing they can do against my king. The very apparent lack of space plays a role here, even though it might not feel or might not look at first sight like a, a position where we genuinely talk about space advantage, but it's actually one. And most importantly, h6 is irrelevant, right? Because it doesn't create a threat. Yeah, yeah so they need to do something with the rock for it to be a threat. I don't know, probably I would play rook g1 just to be cheeky so that this is really hardcore discouraged. Although it might not be necessary, maybe e4 is a better move here. And if they go rook somewhere, then you can just pull the bishop back. Yeah. But although you do then have to reckon with knight d5. So there are things to calculate, but in general, I really do like the look of this. And you already see why I wanted to combine this with this. Because with queen on d2, this setup looks a heap more clumsy. Because it's not your rook that is slicing, or di slicing dicing down the d-file. Additionally to that, I really didn't like about queen d2... This awkward double attack combo. Yeah. I Part of me doesn't want to believe that this is playable because, again, this is too many night moves without, you know, worrying about development. But as a motive, it's a bit annoying. And I dealt with that sufficiently and successfully with Queen H4 too. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Oh, played. Okay. 
Surprise, surprise. And they get a winning position from it. But... Okay, so... You remember when I said about 15 seconds ago that this is on. But this is a move that I would still check because it goes very strongly against principles. And that mm -hmm. it moves the same knight three more times with this being at home. Mm -hmm. So my natural reaction to this is that I'm going to defend this, not this. Because I see that knight takes c4, if my queen is not yeah. e, is going to be met with e4 with the tempo. And at that point, I'm already seeing that this is spiraling out of control. This is direct the epitome of my concept about gambits. That the best gambits in chess are the ones that are responsive gambits. Not the, oh, I'm going to play d4 Mora gambit on move 2 and I'm going to gambit every single game. No, it's the occasion when you realize that they are attacking a pawn. And if I choose to gambit it, I might get an amazing position out of it by virtue of having five zillion tempi at my disposal whilst clumsy knights are jumping around trying to secure themselves. Yeah. So this is, this should always be in the forefront of your thinking when they attack a pawn like this. Is is that like, hang on, why do I bother, bother guarding it when I can actually just go like, yep, yeah, all right, take my pawn, I will play e4. I don't even know what, maybe rook c8 is best. That's actually quite a, a good looking move, to be honest. But already you see like this, this and e5 is a quite dangerous idea. So there is a lot going on already in this position that I really, really like for white. I don't know if it's objectively winning. Don't think so. Rook c8 is a really good defensive measure, which I overlook slightly. So I might have to alter this plan. But overall, the concept is there. I want to sack this. I want to get e4 in with the tempo and take it from there. I, I'm not sure what best is, what the best way is to play it though, or the best move order. Okay, let's go with queen d3. Um, I will revisit this maybe later. Oh, it looks it's still quite annoying, eh? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it definitely needed to be this. And then rook c8 is, is still a move to beat, kind of. The issue is, is that if I attack the knight, sometimes knight e5 comes with the tempo. But then again, bishop e2 and then f4 is also on, so that, that may be double-edged. Man, I really want a castle here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that's asking for it uh, a little bit. <laughs> At least a little bit with this C-file and the knight being such a boss there. Yeah, so if I take this and I play E5 of H6 is obviously the problem. I'm trying to find some tactics that justify or exploit the rook on C4. As an unguarded piece, but... This is a royal mess. I would be very surprised if somehow this wasn't good for white, but uh, yeah, let's let me just check for a sec if we could. Yeah, queen c two just feels so good, man. Yeah, queen c two, but apparently it's not good enough. Yeah, engine's favorite, but yeah, knight c four e four rook c eight. We exactly predicted the best line, and castles. Hello. <laughs> Hello! Wah! Hello! Still got it, baby. Yeah, That's but uh, admittedly, this has gone sideways because now black has their chances. B5 is a beautiful countermeasure, by the way. Yeah. This is what uh, good chess looks like, man, when both sides are really, really going after it. But that is a testament to how unfortunate Queen D2 was here. Although, my favorite Queen H4 is only second best on the list. But I would rather play queen h4 and go second best than play queen d1. Like, I would rather buy it into my fingers than play queen d1. So that's totally unacceptable. Anyway, let's roll on. Whoa! Knight e4, knight c4, 
B3 and they took that too. Wow. I mean, Knight C2 is dirty as, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and ID4 is another move that somehow doesn't seem to add too much value to the situation. But I think you are in trouble, man, here. Like, serious trouble. I am. <laughs> I am. Very serious trouble. Yeah, nah, this is gone. This is gone. Yeah, I much rather go, <laughs> let's take the C4 pawn, castle queen side, and have a party. Uh, than this? Than yeah. the funnily, funnily enough. Funnily enough. Yeah, was there any hope for putting up some resilient defense here? I don't think so, to answer my own question. But I will try. Okay, so I don't know if I take and they take back with the queen, I can score a tempo on this with rook d1. I don't know what that's worth. Probably nothing at all. And frankly, I would take it back with the pawn any day of the week anyway. But at least I'm giving them a choice to go wrong, right? Yeah. But now, <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah, out. I'm out of moves. Actually, you know what? If they did this... Ah! I'm being silly. I wanted to throw this in just for funsies, but it's it's completely dumb. You know, like rook c5, b4 ideas, but uh, there are so mm -hmm. many different refutations, it's not even funny. Let's move on. Is that, was it the last? It's the last game, but I win it. I win it. No way! So, yeah. No, that's that's yeah. that's it. You won this. Yeah, after he he gave away the the like the win, like it's coming here where he makes. Uh, I give him a choice to go wrong, and he takes it. So, hang on. I thought I was coaching Derek, not Houdini. <laughs> I get lucky sometimes. You won this. Yeah. And right there, like. Hello, like, isn't the queen hanging? Asking for yep. a friend? It was hanging, like, there was no way out of it without... Oh, hitting. no, 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 I'm not blaming you. Yeah. I'm just wondering what yeah. your opponent is doing. And by the way, how did you win this? That's a question for a different friend. <laughs> I I think I had better in-game technique, and then he blundered into a, a pin. By the so. way, far from me from wanting to split hairs... But I would much rather come here and then play e3 to utilize the bishop to trap this knight in. If they were dumping up not to move it, then play king d3, after which you literally cannot trap this knight even if you want to. Yeah, that makes sense. And since that's your only hope in this position to not to die is for your opponent to somehow blunder this knight. I know that this walks into a check, but still. Yeah, because after king d3, knight b5, this knight is out. You could argue yeah. that it's always after king d2, I know. But then at least he score a tempo here. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Superior endgame technique? Hello. <laughs> here we go. With seven pawns down, we are winning the endgame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How? I'll say even before the pin, I think I, I was winning or... Or had significant chances. What pin you mean? There's a pin coming up at the end where his, I pin his rook with my bishop and it's over. Oh, okay. I mean, it was perfectly unnecessary to surrender this pawn. They could have played it a very yeah. ugly rook h8 for by kicking your rook out and then go back. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, I'm a bit concerned about, Derek, because what's the goal if now I go here? Yeah. 
So what you can and should do here, although to be honest, you're completely dead no matter what. Actually, you might have done the better thing because if you don't go there, they will go here and here, right? So Yeah, I didn't think I had the time for like H3. You have no time um, and or opportunity to do anything here. This is still completely yeah. dead lost. Rook C5. Now, not in a million years would I have come up with this idea. Not in a million years. And the reason for that is, is because this is not an idea. I don't know what that is. Was it a mass slip? Like, what do they do? What's their name? I don't think so. No, I'm being a jerk. But, like, okay. I, I, I don't get what they're trying to do. Like, knight b5, yeah. like, name the worst plan on the board. It's utterly baffling, but I do think they wanted to play knight b5. Okay. Nope. I stand corrected. They did not want to play knight b5. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, this is begging for my endgame course. <laughs> Absolutely begging for it, right? Like having three pieces against the light squared bishop and goes into the biggest trouble to put all three of them on white. All of them. And all of them are on diagonally, you know, like married up yeah. on diagonals so that the bishop can attack all of them. That is just mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely mint. Wow. Okay. That's how you go from minus 4 to plus 20. Because not only do you I'll win the it. rock, but now this is unstoppable too. So yeah. probably plus 20 was an understatement. You know what would be an interesting exercise, Derek? Give, your, give yourself <clears throat> this position with black against the reasonably high setting of the engine. And see... <clears throat> how you would convert. Because although this is a, a really, really clean win, <clears throat> it also is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So try to see how you go. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a stab at it. In fact, a, a good way would be to start at the very top. Like start it against the highest level uh, setting. Uh-huh. And when you can't beat it, drop down one, try it again, drop down one, try it again. I don't think you will drop a lot down before you start winning. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and uh, you can start wherever, basically. I mean, this is too easy. So let, let's at least give you the H-pawn, right? For funsies. Or oh, the engine, rather. Okay. So you are black. Let's see if you can convert. That's your homework. And on that note, sir, we are going Done. to cut this... Um, lesson um yeah good stuff derek we, we had some ups and downs <laughs> some doozies yeah, yeah sure. we, we had some doozies here and there but uh, that's how we learn right yeah yeah all right i'm gonna call the